There it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of LFGM Podcast, a Mets podcast. Let's bleep and go Mets. I went PG today. Um, what's up, Matthew? How you doing, man? Good, man. How's it going? I'm all good over here. It's a Wednesday night. We're one day closer to um, some real baseball. It was 60 degrees outside today. I took Tucker, my dog, for a nice long walk. It felt like baseball weather, like the snow is melting. I can see the grass. I'm like, I'm ecstatic. Every day, it's like we're one day closer to um, to opening day, and I am pumped. I can't wait. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there, especially, uh, you know, these next couple of weeks are going to be big as we, you know, shrink that roster and kind of know what our team is going to be looking at and who's going to, you know, be on, on the active roster and, you know, what cuts we're going to have to make. Absolutely. And and I think the big news, not I don't want to say like big news, but it, it was significant. Um, the news out of, out of Mets camp this week was Jose Martinez. Uh, got hurt playing in a spring training game. He tore his meniscus. So it sounds like he's going to be out for four months. Um, I, I mean, at that point, we're talking uh, so March to April, May, June, July. So, and and if you give him two, maybe three weeks to get back up and, and into shape, we're talking like August ish. It's like, I, you're not going to get much out of Jose Martinez this year. Yeah, he's probably, I mean, I don't know what. I don't know if it would be helpful in cutting him or whatever, but he's, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we never see him, you yeah. know, in a Mets uniform. So it's, it's sad. Cause you watch it. Like it was a weird play. At, 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 uh, he's kind of like bumped into one of the umps. The ump was calling a fair ball. He kind of bumped into him at first base. And next thing you know, you know, pop the meniscus in his knee and he's out for four months, probably more like four and a half pushing five, I would think. Um, so that, that's, I guess he's our first, our first casualty, the first, you know, the first, uh, big one to fall. Um, he was going to be a good role player for us off the bench, uh, play a little first base, play a little outfield, um, good righty bat off the bench for us. So, uh, that's one cog down, which means it opens up a free spot. You would think on, on the 40 man and, uh, and, and on the, uh, the 26 man. So, um, rumors, rumors are that Michael Franco is the guy that, uh, the Mets are looking at. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I wasn't sure if Martinez was necessarily going to make the team. So, really? yeah. Yeah. So I, that's just how I felt. I mean, it helps that he could hit a little bit and the bench was a little bit. It looks like a, de- uh, you know, a defensive replacement type bench, but we got so many hitters you know, in the starting lineup where one of those guys sits, they could fill in that role then as a pinch hitter. But, I mean, he he definitely had a chance at making the team. So, yeah, you got to figure out who's going to be uh, that guy if if that's who you planned on using him as was a, uh, a pinch hitter and righty off the bench. Yeah, I, I like the idea of uh, – so if you sign Michael Franco, he can't kill the Mets, right, unless – like. He does it on the field for us. But usually, I mean, I, I picture him with the Phillies hitting bombs off of us and then going like 0 for 35 on, on like a uh, on a, a long road trip or something like that. He was he was um, like a, a modern day Matt Keller, I think. But um, I, I, it'd be nice to bring in a potential third baseman, I think. And we definitely need some righty pop off the bench. Uh, Michael Franco fits the mold, don't you think? Yeah, it makes sense now. Didn't make sense beforehand, but uh, right. I guess they they probably had known that uh, um, Martinez was was done. So that's probably why those talks have uh, ramped up. And I, I think you know they probably have time on him in terms of like signing him before anyone else gets to him. I think like maybe the Orioles or someone was looking at him as well, but I do think they want to see this through with a few more guys and think, well, maybe we can, maybe we got something here that we, you know, have overlooked or didn't know beforehand, or maybe, you know, like there's guys like Luis Guillaume and stuff that, um, 
you know, maybe deserve an extra look yeah. in terms of being that 26 man. Because when they signed uh, Villar, um, he got kind of pushed out. But he, he's a legitimate player that could play everywhere in the infield. And if he can hit a little bit, then maybe he's our guy and we don't even know it. Yeah, I, I I know you love Guillaume. Uh dude can flash the glove, man. He made he made a play the other day where it was just a, like a frozen rope hit right at him and he was he you know, anybody else that you get eaten up by that and he was able to, you know, calmly just throw the ball over to first base and like walk it off like nothing happened. I'll always picture Luis Guillaume just casually in the dugout just grabbing a flying bat at him like nothing was going on. <laughs> Oh, he's he's by far the smoothest, yep. one of the smoothest players in the MLB. He's just like you ever see like when he's just like chilling in the field, he just twirls the the glove glove on his finger, <laughs> like, like he like it's a basketball. And he, yeah. you know, I'm just like this guy. This guy well, is awesome. I I I think he would make. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a race between him and. Uh, VR, but I don't know. It, it could very well could be. You just don't know. You don't know the way they're going to work things out with the bullpen, and, and you know the pieces will fall into place themselves, and that's going to change throughout the year. So you know we'll we'll see what happens with that. But just circling back to Franco, he had a pretty good year last year. Two seventy eight batting average, three twenty one on base is not great. He could take a few more walks. Um, not gonna happen <laughs> no i know he's a free swinger man so uh 16 doubles eight home runs 38 rbis in 60 games so uh he, he played all 60 for kansas city um I, they're not terrible numbers i don't again it's hard to judge in a 60 game season what are you going to do in 162 i don't hate the idea <clears throat> i don't love the idea um, but like I said, it does kind of like fit the mold that of the type of player that the Mets would be looking for. Yeah, well, you know what you're getting with him, which I think is a good thing. You know, you know that he's got some pop. Um, you know that he he's gonna swing and miss a lot, and if that's you know that's the kind of guy that that we're looking for, you know, then you know I don't think we're gonna get any kind of new surprises for better or worse if we yeah. get him. So he's uh, listen. He kind of feels like, and this don't take this one the wrong way, because the guy I'm going to mention is like on a pedestal by himself. But he kind of like the player comp, I would say, would be like a Juan Uribe at this point, where it's like, you know what you're going to get. He's going to swing as hard as he can. He's going to try to hit some bombs. He's a he's a, he's a pro. Uribe didn't strike out though, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't strike strike out. Out. But that that was also f- six years ago. Now it's a different game. These guys, yeah, yeah. they don't care. He also had a coke can that he was swinging too. Coke can, baby, yeah. the coke can. Um, so let's just transition right into roster cuts. I mean, the Mets announced their first wave of roster cuts. No surprises there. Um, it was nice to see the Mets invite a lot of the younger guys. Give them. Um, a, a chance to kind of learn and observe from uh, the veterans and see what it's like on a major league level and, and see some major league pitching even. And uh, so it, it was good for the fans too, right? For us, like we get to check out, uh, you know, Pete Crow Armstrong or or uh, Matthew Allen or, or, you know, all these guys. Um, so the, the Mets announced their first wave of roster cuts. Say goodbye to the young fellas. Um I, I didn't see anybody that, you know, caught my eye with that. No, no. It was very standard. Um, every Everything was standard. You know, even Colome. He's a young guy. So, yeah. he's, he's, you know, maybe maybe next year is like a make or break year for him. But they all – you knew that they were all going down. So, yeah. nothing really to see. Nothing, nothing noticeable. Yeah, so what Matt's talking about here is Franklin Kilome, Sean Reed Foley, Thomas Suzapecki were optioned to AAA. I mean, I, I didn't think any of those guys were going to start the year on uh, the Major League roster. I thought if anybody had a chance, it would probably be Sean Reed Foley. Um, but it sounds like, you know, he, they're looking at him as more of a – like Sandy had mentioned earlier, we, we got to get some guys with options. And if you have options, you're going to start in AAA, and that's – what they're doing.
You got anything on that? Your – this is weird. Your picture is, like, going in – all right, it's good now. Maybe it was me. <laughs> Maybe it was you. I don't know, but it was, like, going smaller and then bigger and then smaller and bigger. So I was like, what is going on? Um, yeah, no. No, I really don't have much on that. It's – it is what it is. Like moving on to the next round will be way more interesting and something to talk about, yeah. honestly. Yeah, we'll and we'll see more like those pieces to the puzzle, like I had mentioned earlier, are gonna start falling into place and we'll see more about, you know, where the thought process is um with our, our uh you know leadership team um and see kind of like where uh where their heads are at moving forward after the next round of cuts. Um yeah. So I got a few players I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to go Carrasco. We'll go Tywo Walker. We'll go Jeff McNeil. Um, and then we'll talk about one of the videos that went uh, online today. Um, Carrasco um, has not – he was scheduled to pitch in a, 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 a one of the spring training games, and then they, they bumped him. Um, and Luis Rojas came out earlier today and said he's got some elbow soreness that – you know, right now it sounds like nothing that um, is concerning, um, but they're going to leave him to uh, just live BP um, and, and not, you know, not throw him into a uh, live game action right now. So Carrasco, elbow soreness. You hear elbows with the pitcher and you get scared, but it sounds like this is something he's dealt with his entire career. Um, I don't, I don't really know what to think of this one. Yeah, I don't love it. Especially, I think the newest uh, thing that came out is that he's going to take a few days off from throwing, so there's no live BP or anything. Um, I mean, I think I think it made I think it makes way more sense now that he's to stop throwing as opposed to like I saw earlier today what you said. Like, now he's not going to throw in any games. He's going to do live BP. Well, that worries me way more because it's like if you're throwing and you're throwing live BP. Yeah, I get it's not 100%, but it's like, why can't you go and throw on yeah, the mound? What's, what's the difference? So this makes a little bit more sense to just shut down for a couple of days, and hopefully it's just some basic soreness, like you said. Yep. So uh, I don't know. I, I We are going to need him this year. Um, so I, I think – you got to take more of a, a long-term approach with this than the short-term approach. And it sounds like that's what the Mets are doing. And it's just like, you know, shut it down, take your time. We've got a few more weeks here until, uh, until the, uh, you know, opening day comes and uh, no, there's no rush right now. If you have to miss like a start or two at the beginning of the year, so be it. We have some, some uh, you know, some depth at starting pitcher right now. And, and if that's, you know, worst case scenario, that's fine. Uh, what, you know, what we don't want is for him to be out long-term. Um, so if it's Yamamoto that comes in and starts a game, or maybe it's Lucchese that comes in and starts a game, that's fine. We, we got options. Like that. Exactly. We what, got plenty what, of options, man. What we don't want is him gone for the whole year. That would be uh, – that would suck big time. Um all right, moving on to one of our other starting pitchers, Taiwan Walker, big number 99, uh, got on the bump the other day. No Turk Wendell necklace. I was a little disappointed by that, but he says he's going to wear it next time. Um, we saw one really good inning from Taiwan. We saw one shaky inning from Taiwan. I don't buy much into the spring training starts. I think a lot of these guys um, are like working on stuff rather than trying to get people out. Um, and it sounds like that's what he's been doing. He's working on the split change, uh, which just drops off the table. It looks filthy. Um, so I, I'm not too worried about Taiwan Walker. I know he gave up the two runs, whatever, who cares moving on. Yeah. He's not a guy that, you know, he's not trying to, he's not a guy that's like trying to make the team, right. He's, he's on the team and he's going to be starting. So like you said, he's working on stuff. And so I don't really. I take nothing from this at all, really, honestly. I take nothing from it other than the stuff and the location and even with the location of the pitches. Well, he, like you said, he's working on uh, new pitches and stuff. So um, now is the time to do that, right? It's a whole different thing. Like if you're throwing against your teammates and stuff and you're trying new stuff out, I feel like it's like, like it, it works 
a lot more than as opposed to like game time where you're playing against an a- actual team in spring training because they got guys on that side trying to make a team, right? right? So so they're they're actually like, you know, they're locked in or whatever and they're not, you know, trying to waste any at bats, especially if you got a bunch of young guys up in the lineup. So I don't take anything out of this no, at all. Really. I feel the same way. And I think you you hit on a lot of really good points there. He's not trying to make the team. He could be going up against guys who are trying to make a team. He's working on his stuff. There's nothing to worry about. He's messing with pitches. He's working on a new pitch. I, I, did you ha- happen to see that split change? I didn't, no. Oh, man. Matt, this is going to be almost impossible for left-handed hitters to hit. I mean, this thing just drops off of the table and goes like towards the right-handed batter's box. It is filthy. Now that's a new pitch for him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's. I guess he went from, um, from you know, your normalized change up to more of a split change, and he's getting some crazy movement on it. And nice. I was reading into it. I guess like Hefner encouraged this um, because – uh, it's going to be harder for pitchers or for hitters to pick up the movement on the ball. So it's it's got a different type of movement, different type of spin rate. Um, the thing is just like all over the place. So if he can if he can hone it and control it, and like we kind of talked about, work on it right now, um, this thing could be just filthy come come uh, you know mid year. Hefner's uh, got a lot going on. He's got a lot on his plate this year. He's uh, Great. You know, we always talk about Rojas and stuff and, you know, how it's make or break for him or whatever. But, you know, um, Hefner, which I, I did love the signing and I do think he's he's good. You know, he's got a lot of guys that, he, he you know, he, he's got to get Noah back. He's got a he's a, he's got Taiwan now who's new. You know, he's got, um, you know, and he, then he's got some veterans that kind of know what they're go- doing and know what's going on. But even like someone like Stroman, he's got to make sure that he's on and doesn't have, you know, any kind of uh, off year setbacks or anything. So absolutely, yeah, there's a lot going on there. I mean, Jake going for his third Cy Young in four years. Stroman coming off of a year not pitching. Carrasco already with elbow soreness. Uh, new pitcher in Taiwan Walker. Noah coming back from TJ. Um, Peterson, you did wonders with last year. So let's see some improvement again this year. Lucchese's a new guy. Yamamoto's a new guy. Um, so bullpen th- arms, the young bullpen arms. Absolutely. Yeah. So he, he's, he's got his hands full for sure. Um, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but I, I, I hope I haven't seen it, but I, I would imagine Ricky bonus is still back in the bullpen. I mean, I, I love Ricky. He does a great job out there with the bullpen guys. So. Yeah, I feel like we only notice him when it's like time to bring someone in for the first game, yeah. <laughs> and we see him. We see him pick up the phone. Yeah, we love Ricky. We love Ricky. Big Ricky fan. All right. Anyways, last player I wanted to talk about was Jeff McNeil. He got to start at third base the other day. Um, it's weird because we say we don't take much into Taiwan Walker's performance, but I'm gonna say I do. I do take a little bit into Jeff McNeil's performance at third base. Um, <clears throat> three errors in four innings is really, really, really bad. And it could have been four errors, but um, I forget. I, oh, it was Maxwell came in for Martinez at first base and scooped the ball up and and saved him. Um he's just got he's doing way, way, way too much. He's all over the place. You can't have three errors in four innings. That's that's unheard of. Well, dude, we we take this into account with him because we saw it before in the regular season. I don't. He's not a third baseman, so I don't understand the move. It's whatever. It's spring training, but I don't understand if they plan on maybe playing him there. He wasn't good over there when so he did bad. play over there. So it is he what it is. So like bad. he's great. In the outfield, he's great at second base. Keep him there. I know they don't want him in the outfield too much because, number one, it's crowded. Number two, you know, they don't want him running into walls and shit. But <laughs> their base is not is not the move. So, I mean, that it's like, yeah, man, he's, he's not a third baseman. You got him over there doing the same shit that he did a year, year and a half ago. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what's going to happen. No, I know. I, I just – I was shocked when I saw it, and I thought, all right, like they're just going to give Jeff – or uh, they're going to give – 
um, JD Davis the day off. But I then in my head I was like, well, why just give McNeil the day off then too? Like who cares? Let somebody else play third base. Give Guillaume uh, some reps at third. Give uh, VR some reps at third base. But no, we put Jeff McNeil back out there and he commits three errors. And it's like I I hope they're just like okay experiment over move on never do it again like it shouldn't even be an option at this point yeah no i agree i didn't think we were gonna play him over there this year especially with uh vilar um but i i don't know it's spring training again it's uh you know louis is probably just trying these guys all over the place lesson learned uh yeah, yep. hey, he's just not a third baseman so you know let's uh let's not have him play there vr and Pilar, that's going to be hard all year. I you, just say Pilar because I'm not going to try to. You would is it VR, VR though? They don't VR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's Spanish. The double L is like a Y. VR all right, well, and Pilar. I think we'll be fine with however it's pronounced. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah so if he's listening, he can let us know. <laughs> yeah. My my bad if you're listening, Jonathan. I'll just call him John. Johnny V in the house. Johnny V. I can, I can get on board with Johnny V. All right. Um, Johnny triple. Didn't he hit a triple? Oh, no, he hit a home run. No, he hit a home run. Johnny uh, socked it out. Johnny socked it out of the park. That sounds like a children's book. Johnny sock him. <laughs> sock him robots. All right. Uh, last up for me. Uh, then I'm going to hit you with a little surprise, although it's kind of like fucking watered down by now. But um, – the New York Mets were playing a game of 27 outs today, and they got their 27 outs, and then everybody went onto the field and celebrated like they won the World Series. Why? Why are we doing this? Well, it, it shouldn't have been filmed. <laughs> it ne- it's fine if it's not filmed, but guys, like you know everybody's itching for the, their, their, you know – uh, you can't watch this game on the TV, and all you, all the reporters are there. Everybody's got a cell phone. Uh, Yo, why? Why? I will say this though: twenty seven out, twenty seven outs is exhilarating for practice. It's a great man. game. Great game. Uh, you know, when you get there, like I've coached so many teams where we don't, you know, like we're trying to get twenty seven yeah. outs, but we might be down like fifteen nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, so when they finally, when you count those outs out loud, I understand like the like, okay, we got it. Because 27 outs, you played a full game of just fucking a coach hitting fungos wherever he wants. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, they, hit them wherever he wants. they hit him wherever he wants. So it's like, it's like, I want to hit a double. Here we okay, go. I'm gonna like I'm gonna turn yeah. my whole body this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, no, I, I know. Like, like, and I, I understand the aspect of like it's spring training, you gotta keep things light. Keep it light. Keep it light. Okay, but this is like, bro, you guys just put a target on your back. You didn't I don't care. And I, I don't think they needed to do that. I don't think they, Really, you don't think like the the Los Angeles Dodgers are watching that and go like laughing at us? Sure, maybe, but guess what, dude? What what happened the last however many years that we've been in an organization? There's always someone there to fucking poke fun at us. So yeah, no, you're right. I don't yeah. really care, honestly. We got a lot of guys that are all into like visualization and manifestation and stuff and Not spiritual, you know, what whatever, and it's all cool. I, I, I like stuff like that. So, what do you think? Power to you. Yeah, it's going to get thrown in your face if you don't win. But I guess now we have no choice but to win a World there you Series. Go. So, there Back you go. It Back it yeah. up. What do you yeah. think Brandon Nimmo was saying, like, when, when he's charging in from center field? Like, oh, great job, team. I'm so proud of all of you. <laughs> like, I mean, there had to have been some players that were just like, I don't want to do this. Do you think Jake wanted to do that? No, no, no. I, I don't think Jake did that. I actually, I, if we should tr- watch the video and do like a John Boy breakdown, and like so, he Jake was. walked off the field while everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I was. I tried to look at like who was on the mound and stuff. It's grainy. It's far away. It's hard to tell. But yeah, I was, I was wondering that. I was definitely wondering that. 
Yep. It was an interesting one. Okay. I texted you on Monday and I told you <clears throat> surprise segment. So I'm going to preface this with like Tuesday, this kind of went like Mets world viral. So now it seems like I'm late to the party. Although F that I wasn't late. I was a day early. So I'm a little disappointed, but I'm going to I'm going to play it. So you asked me if it was trivia. It's not trivia, but it's kind of a question. I'm going to play a song and I want you to think of like whose song this is. Are they walking to the mound with this song? Are they walking up to the plate with this song? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trivia, but all right. I want you to tell me who this is. Are you ready? Yeah. Tell me if it's too loud. I'll lower it. Is this, a, is this a new map? That's all you get. Is this a former Met or is this a current Met? Current Met. Wow, so you didn't see this. This is a current Met. This is big news. I don't know what this is. This is Edwin Diaz's walkout song. Closer, oh, Edwin Diaz. So oh, this I never want to hear that music ever again. This song is called Narco. This was his song in Seattle. He changed his song when he came to the Mets. And then he brought the song back last year. And nobody knew because nobody was allowed into the, you know, you couldn't have fans in the stands. Dude, this song is electric. Give, uh, give me 10 more seconds. Sounds like a Breaking Bad song a little bit. I'm trying to get it popping each and every way. Wait, so that's English then? I, I kind of like the song in the beginning. and then no, it's it's, I, I'm picturing okay. Steve Gelbs doing the trumpet thing down in Miami as Edwin Diaz's Taking off Sugar Diaz, coming in to shut it down, playing that song. It is oh, electric, it's man. Me PTSD this year. It's electric. I mean, it sounds like a Breaking Bad song. It does a little bit. Yeah, but it does a little bit. All right, listen, he could have whatever he wants as long as he pitches well. By the way, I don't know if you saw this either, but my, my breakout pitcher of the year, who you laughed at, <clears throat> you laughed at. When I said I think Miguel Castro is going to have a breakout year, um, Miguel Castro was selected, good. selected by Anthony Recker to also have a breakout year this year. So yeah, and, fucking Anthony Recker also said that he trusts Edwin Diaz. So there you go. <laughs> me and the wrecking ball. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. You guys, put you guys in a room together, and I'll close the door. Oh man, no, I, I yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we'll we'll do to be determined on on uh, on my boy Miguel Castro. Castro looked good in his last outing. He looked good, and he didn't have those stupid fucking cleats. So maybe no, that's the big thing. We got good juju, good vibes. We're playing narco in the in the clubhouse. Miguel Castro's got some new shoes that he was able to buy. Um, Dude, that's what that song is. That's a like you win a game and you're just like you. <laughs> Imagine like Howie Rose like calling the game and like and uh, trying to describe what song is on for like people yeah. who are driving home from work. <laughs> yeah. And Edwin Diaz walks out to uh, the trumpets blaring. <laughs> I know that'd be funny. I mean, that they, they imagine if he does well enough, like have the whole live mariachi band there to do it. Honestly, I think if we get sponsored. We could make that happen. Like, it would be perfect if we could get, like, Cholula hot sauce to do it, you know? It's catchy. It's in my head now. It's, it's, it's oh, catchy. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you so you can listen to it. I'll send it to you. I mean, yeah, outside the stadium, I could see that happening before we go into a game, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just cool, but it's also, like, it's lasting down at McFadden's. No one needs to hear that more than once. So, well, you can only get it once a game. 
No, I'm saying I like I it, you know, every every great team you notice has a good song, you know, has a team song or some kind of team thing that they do. And it's usually like a song like for sure, for sure. go back and look. I'm telling you, like, I think 2012 Giants had that one song um, goes, I put my hands in the air. way oh, remember that song? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Remember that song? <laughs> No, not when you sing it. I put my hands up in the – yeah, I don't have the right rhythm for it. No, but you're right. There's – I mean, like – Every uh, great team has a good song. Cowboy Up. I mean, there's there's always something. something. There's yeah, always some something. kind of theme. Some kind of theme. So if we make it a mariachi-style band in the locker room or – We had the Canary, the remember? Uh, not the canary we had yeah it was the canary right we had the canary yellow with cespedes in 2015 yeah we had that you know each team's got a thing man it's like the team personality kind of takes over a little bit maybe narcos are team personality who knows that will happen early this year that's my prediction for that is that we will have something that will be fucking fun remember you after wins i hope you're right Hey, by May 1st. So we had the jerseys getting ripped off. We had salt and pepper. Remember salt and pepper? The, the grinders. Yeah. yeah. So there's uh, always Razor actually kind of killed it because he uh, he created that and we weren't very good. <laughs> so yeah, the Todd father. We'll That's see him in July. <laughs> we'll see Todd in July. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck. Oh, God, no. We're not trading for him again, are we? <laughs> no, we'll see him in July again. <laughs> I thought you were like, yeah, yeah, the Mets play the Pirates in, in July. Nope. No, no, no. no. We'll for him again. When he signed with the Pirates, I was like, Met by July. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. That's funny. <laughs> well, no, those were both Brody moves, right? Didn't Brody bring him in? Brody signed Todd, and then Brody traded for Todd. Well, and then, no, Brody traded him away. And then Brody and then Brody traded for him. Yeah, so I mean, we'll figure out what Kevin Scott moves look like, but um, you know, there's got to be something like that along the lines where that's you know every GM's got like a go-to move. Yeah, like go yeah. every like, GM's got their guy. Brody's was like, just bring Todd Frazier back; <laughs> it'll be all good. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, uh, is this Todd Frazier? Yeah, uh, we'd like to bring you back to the Mets to win here, um, to win now, and to uh, win in the future. We are looking for short-term and long-term success. We're going to win championships, lots of them. Great you, success. You make Brody Donald Trump every single time without me. No, fans. I don't. That's wrong. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Wrong. yeah. Brody or Donald Trump, who knows? I don't know. Wrong. Same person. All right, whatever. Why don't you do a Brody? Go ahead. You got a lot to say. Give us your breast Brody. No, I actually I don't know <laughs> what he says. Honestly, I hope he's doing well. I hope he's. Good. I think he's doing more than just well. I think he's going to be just fine. I think what he does every day is he wears a robe and he makes his kids pancakes for breakfast every day. Okay, another flapjack coming right up. Yep. Yeah. No, I think he's actually uh, – he, he signed with Jay-Z, his sports agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's um, over at CAA. They merged. So He's They're nearby crazy. in New York. He is nearby. Yeah. We'll All see. right. Well, I got nothing else. You got anything? No, nah, I'm done. All right. Then we'll put it in the books. <laughs>